just barely 48 degrees outside and I'm already breaking out the sleeveless shirts. This is how people in New England work. If it gets above 40 degrees, we're wearing t-shirts and tank tops. That's just the way it happens. I know people in Florida, it's like, or LA, it's like 70 degrees and it's really chilly. Up here, if it hits over 40, we're good. Let's go to the beach, let's hang out. Hey guys, this is Desiree and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews. And today I'm going to be reviewing Atheists Who Kneel and Pray by Taryn Fisher. First of all, before I say anything, can we just gush at this cover? This is my favorite cover of all time. If my camera will focus, is it focusing? There we go. This is my favorite cover of a book of all time. I want to print it out and I want to put it on my wall. I'm seriously considering emailing this to my husband and having him print it out while he's at work, even though he only has black and white printers. But still, I fucking love this cover. Now, on to the rest of it. Well, kind of. This, my friends, is what reading is all about. This book is, oh my god, so fucking amazing. This is the best book that I've read all year, bar none. This is one of my favorite books that I have ever read, ever. So many of you guys have been wanting to read this one. I also saw the review from Jessica from Peace Love Books a while back. She loved it. And I actually had one of you guys, Eduarda, I believe, so hi Eduarda, um, message me about it, asking me if I had read it. And ever since then, I've had it loaded on my TBR. It took me a little while to get to it, but I did get to it. And I am so fucking happy that I did. I ate this book up in just a few hours. I stayed up so late. I started it last night and I stayed up ridiculously late in order to finish this book because I could not put it down. I was not willing to put it down for anything, even for precious, precious sleep. I was not willing to put this book down because this is life. This is what reading is all about. This is what I love about reading and I am just in awe of Taryn Fisher and what she has brought to the table in this book. Let's get into the blurb. Yara Phillips is a wandering muse. She dates men who need her, but always moves on to something new, never staying in one place for very long. David Lisey is in need of a muse, a talented musician lacking lyrical inspiration. When he first sees her, he knows he's found what he's been looking for. Yara believes she can give David exactly what he needs to reach his full potential, a broken heart. David's religion is love. Yara's religion is heartache. Neither is willing to surrender, but religion always requires a sacrifice. This is such an authentic book with such raw and gritty and volatile subjects and intense characters. I could not put this book down like I just said. I was totally 100% invested from page one. I was into it. I needed to know what was going to happen. Yara is our heroine and she is a bit of a wanderer. She's a bit of a vagabond. She's originally from England and she's sort of just touring across America city to city. She loves cities. She feels like in the country there isn't enough noise. You can't feel the heartbeat from the city. There's not enough noise drowning out whatever it is that's going on in your head. And Yara is a very, very complex creature. And the main reason why I love this book is how complex Yara and David are. So Yara is working at a bar in Seattle and she ends up getting a splinter in her finger and David, our hero, comes in and takes it out for her. And ever since then, she can't stop thinking about him and he continues to come into the bar completely enamored with her. So much so that he says, I'm gonna marry you one day without even knowing her name. They begin to interact with each other. Yara certainly has her doubts. Yara has a history of being amused for artists who have lost their way or, and for artists who can't really find an honesty and an authenticity within their work. So it tends to fall flat. And what happens is she breaks their heart and heartbreak tends to be, for most artists I think, uh, a very big catalyst for real raw art and usually that is the art that really makes it big and really connects with people. And David is in some ways no different but in some ways he is because she is instantly attached to him. She knows that there's something about him that she shouldn't get involved with. And she discovers that he's never really experienced heartache. He's just kind of bumped into relationship relationship. And he, 
She basically says, I'll, I'll do this with you, but I'm going to have to break your heart, essentially. Now, Yara has not had the easiest of upbringings, and this has caused her to be very, very closed off. This is one of the things that also caused her, caused her to be sort of a wanderer and sort of a vagabond. She loves moving from place to place. Consistency and normalcy is not really her thing. She constantly wants to keep going, always in a city, never in the country, and she's never going to plunge herself into a relationship because... As formidable as she likes to come across, because she does come across as very, very cold, very unloving, and she can be very brutal at times. Within herself, internally, she is very soft, she's very damaged, she's very broken. But I related to her so much in that way, and I think a lot of us could relate to her, because we all have painful pasts. We all have something in our past that is still painful that's still a little raw. For Yara, it was just the whole idea of, of love and heartache. And as the blurb stated, Yara's religion is heartache. That's what she's best at because whenever things become too scary and frightening for her, she ends up running away. And that's exactly what happens with David and Yara. Now, I'm, I'm going to try my best to not go into any spoilers here because I do think that in order to experience the full gamut um, with this book, I think it's really best to go in as completely blind as you possibly can. However, um, the first half of this book is told in the past all about Yara and David meeting and how their relationship evolves from there. And then the second half of the book is something entirely different, which I'm not going to uh, go into. But the base of it is that Yara has this intense, uh, visceral fear of, of love and David is just wanting to give her his everything and David has his issues as, as well but Yara is so damaged and so broken that there's really no way that she can see past who she is and and how um, how to get past her fear of love and this book truly does showcase how difficult uh, it is to let a very painful past uh, ghost. Sometimes we can unknowingly run our lives by our past and the fear of our past and, and the, the memories of the pain that it brought us. We'll do anything to not feel that again and that's Yara. Even at the expense of hurting other people, she tends to sabotage things actually before they can get to a certain point where she's so dug in that she, if it all fall, fails, which she feels it will, it will because of who she is, she, she's that insecure about herself that it's going to ruin her. So she tends to sabotage things before they can get to that point and move on with her life and move on to the next city and, you know, live her life that way. So she's always on the go. She's always sort of creating a new life for herself because becoming attached to any one life, any one person, she feels is only, is only going to result in heartache. And I just felt so connected to these characters. Even though I wasn't experiencing exactly what they were experiencing, I loved how visceral this entire book was. It was brutal sometimes. The level of angst in here was real. I mean, it was like I was experiencing it all myself. It was like it wasn't just me looking through Yara and David's eyes. It was like I was going through it because of the way that Taryn Fisher wrote it. It was really brilliantly written. The angst was so intense, but it was so believable because of the, the dynamic way that she wrote these characters and the story that she wrote um, around them. It was perfect, and these characters are so flawed, and I love that, especially Yara. But even though she was flawed, and at times, at many times, she did things that I hated her for. She really did things I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Get over this, you know, do something. Don't don't follow this pattern for the rest of your life. I still empathize with her. I still found a lot of redeemable qualities within her. I still loved her as a character. And it made her trajectory that much more interesting and that much more satisfying when I reached the end of the book because of how much growth needed to take place within Yara as a character. She had one of the most amazing story arcs of any character that I have read ever in my life. I just, I'm in complete awe right now of Taryn Fisher. Truth be told, I've only ever read one Taryn Fisher book and I didn't even finish it. It was Fuck Love, I believe. And I can't remember a damn thing about that book. I think I only got like 10 or 12% through it and I ended up putting it down for whatever reason. That was a couple of years ago. Um, and I haven't read whatever since, but I've obviously heard of her because she is known to be one of the writing unicorns of the um, contemporary romance world. And I'm so happy 
that I picked this book up. I mean, I loved everything about it. I loved the characters. I loved the differences in the writing in particular between David's and Yara's perspectives because it is a dual perspective novel. Uh, and there are clear differences in the way that David is written and there are clear differences in the way that Yara is written. And I fully believe that that was done in, completely intentionally because when you get to see David's perspective, he's in a very specific area in his, in his life and I feel like the writing is there to reflect uh, where his headspace is at that time. And I'd never seen that before and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. There is such turmoil in this book that I, I'm telling you, my gut was just in a bunch of knots. I was like sweating as I was reading this book because you know that something happens and there are so many different catalysts in this book of what is going to happen that's going to explode. And it's not really just one thing. There are so many different things. It's not like perfect relationship, perfect relationship, boom, something happens. Like something is just thrown in there for the sake of angst and for the sake of a uh, point of conflict. This entire book was the point of conflict. The characters and their their inner suffering and their, their flaws. And then the outside third party sources that were also big catalysts. There, this entire book was so well fucking written, I can't get over it. I loved everything about this book. Everything. It was visceral, it was raw, it was authentic. It was something that I cannot believe that I've never read before, but it was something that just sent my heart soaring because this is one of those books that just reminds me of why I love reading so much. It's it's one of those books that just really makes me fall in love with, with contemporary romance and this entire community even more because of brilliant books like this. Taryn Fisher is a writing fucking queen. I am definitely down to be reading more from her. So if you guys have any suggestions of what to read next by Taryn Fisher, definitely let me know or save it for um, another Pick What I Read Next video and put it in the comments there. But I am definitely geared up to read more Taryn Fisher. So thank you guys so much for suggesting this. Um, Eduarda, thank you so much for personally messaging me and asking me to read this book. I fully now understand your love for this book because now I am insanely obsessed with this book. I'm terrified that I'm going to fall into a reading slump, which I can't afford to do this month. But this book, I don't think anything is going to top it. I just don't think anything is going to top this book, but we'll see. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are not already to see some more videos from me. And I will see you guys later. Bye.